Hello garden friends and welcome back to Smart Garden. Today we're exploring something truly transformational that's probably sitting neglected in your fireplace or fire pit right now. If your plants seem lackluster despite your best efforts, if your tomatoes aren't setting fruit like they should, or if your flowering plants just won't bloom abundantly, the answer might not be another expensive bottle from the garden center. Instead, it could be hiding in plain sight as ash, waiting to be awakened through an ancient fermentation technique that turns this overlooked byproduct into liquid gold for your garden. For generations, gardeners have casually tossed wood ash onto their gardens, understanding vaguely that it does something good for the soil. Most people recognize it as a pH adjuster, something to neutralize acidic soil, and leave it at that. But what if I told you that we've been barely scratching the surface of wood ash's true potential? The revelation came to me when researching traditional Korean and Japanese farming methods where farmers have fermented ash for centuries to create what they call a potassium powerhouse. This isn't just about adjusting pH anymore. This is about fundamentally transforming a waste product into one of the most effective, sustainable fertilizers you can create in your own backyard. The fermentation process breaks down the minerals in ash, converting them from relatively inert compounds into forms that plants can immediately recognize and absorb. It's the difference between handing someone a locked treasure chest versus giving them the open chest with the key already turned. Let's talk about the potassium paradox that frustrates gardeners everywhere. Potassium ranks as one of the three primary nutrients plants need, right alongside nitrogen and phosphorus, yet it's chronically deficient in many garden soils. Unlike nitrogen, which gardeners obsess over for lush green growth, potassium works behind the scenes as the unsung hero of plant health. It regulates water movement within plant cells, activates enzymes crucial for photosynthesis, strengthens cell walls to resist disease and pests, and most importantly, for food gardeners, it's absolutely essential for flower and fruit development. Without adequate potassium, your tomato plants might grow tall and leafy but, uh, produce disappointing yields, your roses might develop weak stems that are prone to fungal infections, and your root vegetables, well, they might develop poorly. The challenge with synthetic potassium fertilizers is that they deliver a concentrated punch that plants consume rapidly, often leading to excess that washes away into groundwater or creates imbalances with other nutrients. Fermented wood ash operates on an entirely different principle. The fermentation process converts the potassium carbonate and other mineral compounds in ash into collated, bioavailable forms that release slowly and steadily. Think of synthetic fertilizers as fast food for plants. A quick energy spike followed by a crash, while fermented ash functions more like a nutritious, sustained release meal that nourishes over time. Additionally, ash brings along friends to the party, calcium for strong cell structure, magnesium for chlorophyll production and, uh, trace minerals like manganese, iron, and zinc that plants need in smaller quantities but that prove equally vital for optimal health. The beauty of this technique lies in its simplicity, requiring nothing more than ash, water, time, and a container. Start by sourcing quality wood ash, and honestly, this detail matters tremendously. Hardwoods like oak, maple, hickory, and fruit woods produce ash with the highest mineral content, particularly potassium. Softwoods work, but yeah, they deliver less nutritional punch. Never, under any circumstances, use ash from treated lumber-painted wood plywood particle board or any wood that's been chemically processed. These materials contain toxins that will contaminate your soil and potentially harm your plants. The ash should be cool, dry, and free from chunks of unburned wood or charcoal, though honestly small pieces won't hurt. For your fermentation vessel, any food-grade plastic bucket or container with a lid works perfectly. Start with a ratio of roughly 1 part ash to 10 to 15 parts water. I typically use about half a kilogram of ash to 10 liters of water but, you know, precision isn't critical here. So, to get started, pour your ash into the container first, then add water gradually while stirring to prevent clumping. The mixture will, at first, look a bit like gray milk and will feel slippery to the touch, and that's because of the alkaline nature of ash. You'll want to cover the container loosely just enough to let gases escape during fermentation, but still keep debris out. 
Now the fermentation period usually ranges from about two to four weeks depending on temperature. Warmer conditions will, you know, speed the process along. Your main task during this time is to stir the mixture vigorously every two to three days. This aeration actually serves several purposes. It oxygenates the solution, encourages beneficial microbial activity, and helps break down those ash particles. As the days go by, you'll notice the mixture darkening and developing an earthy, slightly sulfurous smell, which is quite different from that initial chalky odor. This transformation is a sign that biological processes are converting those locked up minerals into forms that plants can actually use. When the liquid reaches a dark gray to brownish color and the smell shifts to that characteristic earthy fermentation scent, well, your potion is ready. Before using your fermented ash, you'll want to strain it through cheesecloth, an old t-shirt or even fine mesh, just to remove any solid particles that could clog sprayers or settle unevenly in your soil. The resulting liquid concentrate is pretty powerful and honestly, it must be diluted before you apply it. The standard dilution ratio is 1 part fermented ash liquid to 10 parts water. For particularly sensitive plants or seedlings, I often go even more conservative at 1 to 15. It's honestly better to apply weaker solutions more frequently than risk burning those delicate roots with excessive alkalinity or mineral concentration. For application, you have several effective options. As a soil drench, just pour the diluted solution around the base of your plants, making sure to thoroughly soak the root zone. This method works excellently for heavy feeders like tomatoes, peppers, squash, and fruiting trees. Go ahead and apply every two to three weeks throughout the growing season. As a foliar spray, you'll want to use an even more diluted solution, maybe 1 to 20, and spray leaves in the early morning or evening to avoid any risk of leaf burn. This method delivers nutrients directly through leaf stomata and works wonderfully for plants showing potassium deficiency symptoms like leaf edge browning or weak stems. You can also add undiluted fermented ash liquid to your compost pile, where it actually accelerates decomposition and enriches the finished compost with minerals. So, the results honestly speak for themselves in ways that will genuinely surprise you. Plants treated with fermented ash, well, they develop noticeably thicker and sturdier stems. Fruiting plants end up setting more abundant crops, with better flavor development too. Disease resistance it improves markedly because potassium strengthens cell walls, making it harder for fungal pathogens to penetrate plant tissues. You'll also notice that colors intensify in both flowers and fruits. Root development becomes more robust, which helps plants better withstand drought stress. And, you know, these aren't just subtle improvements that require scientific instruments to detect. If you walk into a garden treated with fermented ash versus one relying solely on synthetic inputs, you'll see and feel the difference in plant vigor and soil vitality. What excites me most about fermented wood ash isn't just the remarkable plant growth it produces, though that alone makes it worthwhile. It's the philosophy it represents, taking something we'd normally discard, applying traditional wisdom and simple biological processes, and creating something genuinely valuable, without spending money or relying on industrial agriculture systems. This really embodies true sustainability, closing loops and building self-reliance in our gardens. I challenge you to start your first batch this week, source some quality ash, set up your fermentation bucket, and commit to the simple maintenance routine, document your results with photos, and, you know, pay attention to how your plants respond. Then come back and share your experiences in the comments because we're building a community of gardeners who understand that the most powerful solutions often come not from corporate laboratories, but from working intelligently with natural processes that have served farmers for millennia. If you found this guide valuable, please subscribe to Smart Garden and share this video with fellow gardeners who are ready to transform their approach to soil fertility. Together, we're not just growing better gardens, we're cultivating a movement toward truly sustainable, regenerative, growing practices. Until next time, keep growing smart.